was my brother. Pita, father, Fatiha, Muth, mother, Mayu, Asra, Sarah, Hestis, Estis, Hed, Heath, Ori, Horus, Her, Il, Elohim, Allah, Amen. Fahami, brothers and sisters, my name is Minister Akhenaten Amun Ra from the Fahami Temple of Yaisei Coaching Science, Ohio. I would like to thank you all for tuning in to our broadcast and allowing us to speak with you this afternoon. I would like to welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. Fahami, ladies and gentlemen, Future gods and goddesses, this is a classroom. Pens and paper are welcome. These lectures are for serious-minded individuals who want to grow and improve the quality, the quality of their life and enable themselves to give others what they need in order to help them grow and improve their quality of life. Please send questions to our Facebook page via email or text. We will respond within a 24- to 48-hour period. I'm going to present the priest from the Fahami Temple of Gaize Coaching Science, but first, let me introduce Fahami to those who aren't familiar with it. Fahami means divine understanding. It is also the name of the new Negro or Kemite culture founded on the background of ancestor worship. Worship of our ancient ancestors as well as our recent forefathers, our noble ancestors, ancient and divine, whose wisdom graced the land of Egypt Ethiopia, Arabia, Canaan, Chaldea, and the entire Torah zone, the Torah belt of the mystical name Ethiopia. And now I present the Fahami priest from the Temple of Gaizai Culture and Science, Priest Khalid Omar. Thank you, uh, Minister Amin Ra, Akhenaten Amin Ra, uh, for that warm introduction. Um, I'd like to take the first take the time to thank everybody for for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we are the Fahami Temple of Jaize Culture and Science. This is our inaugural lecture on Facebook Live. Although I have lectured on Facebook Live previously as a visitor of the Fahami Temple of Divine Understanding. This lecture will be posted on YouTube and you will be able to find it by searching Fahami or by going to our website at the Fahami Temple of Divine Understanding or our website Fahami.com. My apologies. This lecture will be posted as I mentioned so you know, if uh, you don't get a chance to enjoy the entire lecture uh, at this time, you can always come back later on during the week. We believe that it is very important to understand the history and the background of anything that you may desire to become a part of or be a part of. Therefore, our first lecture series will center around or on the subject designed to help you to get to know who we are and to help you to understand the philosophy of the organization. We will begin by introducing the founder of our movement our prophet, Paul Nathaniel Johnson, the Fahami Rasul, peace be upon him. He is the culture prophet. So, we will discuss a bit about that. In the name of the Most High God, the Beneficent, the Merciful. This lesson was written by and delivered by High Priest P. Tyra in 2011 in New Orleans. I will include a few inserts from myself. Who was Paul Nathaniel Johnson, Sheikh Ahmadine? 
The Fahami prophet and master mystic was born in Hempstead County, Arkansas, county seat, Washington, Arkansas. The paperwork indicates that, that he was born on June the 10th, but all that I know, or all those who I know that knew the Rasul always celebrated his birthday on May the 29th. And he was born in 1888. He, would con he was considered strange at an early age, adept, apt, and mysterious, an interpreter of dreams and visions. He served as a junior chemist in the United States Civil Service and as a sergeant in World War I. Paul Nathaniel Johnson attended Philander Smith College at Little Rock, Arkansas, where he received a bachelor's of arts degree. Paul Nathaniel Johnson was the first African American man ever ordained and appointed as a Muslim shake on American soil. His ordination and appointment was consecrated by Dr. Mufti Muhammad Sadiq of Kudan or Kudian, Punjab, India, the first Muslim missionary to America, representing the Hazrat Mizra, Bihashur, Dean Mahmoud Ahmad, the head of the Ahmad Ahmadian movement in Islam, which was founded by Mizar Ghulam Ahmad. Paul Nathaniel Johnson is the author of numerous poems, songs, essays, booklets, etc. The Fahami prophet wrote a revealed Bible entitled The Holy Book of Ham al Kim. Amun Ra blessed him with many gifts and talents, among them oratory, writing, chemistry, clear vision, and language. During his earthly pilgrimage, he suffered much persecution, but Amin Ra has given him the victory. Since his advent, or since the advent of his spirit, comedic culture clubs are springing up everywhere. Now, he distributed information about the divine revelations that he received far wide and among networks of missions he had established. <clears throat> the missions stretched from St. Louis, Missouri, where he was headquartered, to Los Angeles, California, then on to Cleveland, Ohio, Denver, Colorado, and eastward to Coffeeville, Kansas, and Detroit, Michigan, and then on to Gary, Indiana, Chicago, Illinois, Glasgow, New York, and other locations throughout the country. The prophet made his transition on July 14, 1954. After listening to a group of his members commenting on the hot weather conditions in the early 1950s, the Fahami Rasu said, You haven't seen anything yet. Just wait until the day I die. In conformity with this statement, July 14, 1954, is the hottest day ever recorded in the history of St. Louis or the Midwestern states. The Fahami Rasul,
proclaimed his prophethood in 1919. So we celebrate our 100 year anniversary on December 21st at the winter solstice. The day the S-U-N son is born. Let's talk a little bit about his philosophy and what he was all about. The Fahami prophet communicated the message to the general public and his far-flung following of black Americans that the time had come for the black man to lift himself from the heels of his oppressor and begin to learn and understand the purpose and use of a culture of his own. He was the culture prophet. He communicated to the masses that the time had arrived for the black race to employ a culture that addressed his unique and specific needs. Mind you, this was 100 years ago. The Fahami prophet taught that the time had come for the black race to develop a culture that explained the origins of his own race so that he could be free from the cultural doctrines of other nations and the limitations and restrictions they placed upon us. He taught that it is time for the development of a culture that supported the black race's natural and unique way of seeing and understanding everything. And then give accurate expression to those things as he saw and understood them. The time had come for the establishment of a process or method that would consistently develop and support the latent talents and abilities of the black race as they began to emerge in this new era or age. And I add the age of Aquarius. He taught that the time had come for the re-establishment of a process and means of enlisting the help and assistance of those noble black souls, our ancestors, that have preceded our existence on this earth. Again, he taught this a hundred years ago. He taught that the time had come for the establishment of a means of reconnecting directly with an infinite source of power that is designed exclusively for use by the black race without the need for intermediaries from other races and cultures. For each of these things that I have just enumerated, the Fahami prophet brought inspired instructions to teach the black race how to achieve these objectives. Now that in itself is unique in our leaders. And I emphasize, a hundred years ago, let's remember, he was the culture prophet. The Fahami prophet addressed the fall of our once mighty nation and assigned the reason 
from our lofty position in the world to our having turned away from a culture of our own in favor of the cultures of non-African nations such as the Europeans and the Asians which are based on idolatry and we'll cover that in a later lecture. As our four parents delve deeper into the cultures of other nations, we grew apart from the culture of our noble ancestors, the foundation from which sprang every culture and religion in the world. And our great civilizations began to decay and fall into ruin. The great storehouse of knowledge built up over thousands of years of investigations by our ancestors was raided by every nation determined to speed our demise and our fall from prominence. Once these raiders of the Kemite Kushite storehouse of knowledge were armed with the knowledge stolen from our once great storehouse of knowledge. Their subjection of our race began in earnest. Our decline continued until our homelands and our people are now being lorded over by foreigners that have invaded our homelands, enslaved our people, and endeavored to destroy all evidence that we existed and was once a great nation and a mighty race. Okay, in order to revamp or repair our pre-slavery status, we must necessarily learn of our standing in the world prior to our abandonment of the teachings of our ancestors. The starting place in our quest to revamp our pre-slavery status is our ancient languages. Kemite, Kushite, Amharic, Jaize, Hebrew, etc. And our history from ancient to modern times. These are the keys to our past cultures and they are essential elements in any culture we form today. As the Holy Fahami Prophet taught, your language and history are the keys to your culture and let no one tell you differently. It is the only road to self-respect and to get the respect of others. Holy Fahami Gospel, chapter 8, paragraph 12. And language is the bedrock foundation of culture. Holy Fahami Gospel, 2026. 20, a people's culture contains the plan or blueprint to guide and direct the group direct the growth and development of the talents, potentials, and abilities of those people. Without a racial, racial, racial culture of one's own, the growth and development of the attributes of the race 
are not under the control or direction of the race so affected by that culture. Basically what the high priest is saying there is that you either have your own or you have somebody else's. Therefore, you are subjected to their ideals and way of seeing things and not your own. Culture is the foundation upon which the character of the race is built. Character within the race is the sum of qualities possessed by the race that distinguishes it from other races. Qualities other than skin color uh, and hair texture. A race's true character is the mental and psychic disposition they gain from a culture of their own. This disposition is impressed upon the people through education, inculcation, and the practice of traditions designed to develop and perpetuate those traits and characteristics. The high character or high traits taken on by the race are the result of a unique culture. A culture that builds strength of the mind, resoluteness, independence, and individuality. A unique racial culture builds the moral qualities of the people and establishes the principles and motives that control the life of that people, race, or nation. A cultured person is characterized by possessing the peculiar are notable traits of the culture of the race. In other words, a cultured person illustrates high developed phases of the characteristics of the race promoted by that culture. The unique culture brought by the Holy Fahami Prophet was for the purpose of correcting the negative characteristics displayed by our people as a result of having been steeped in foreign cultures and religions for the past 2,000 years. The Fahami prophet said, and I quote, close scrutiny reveals that the Negro is too emotional in the wrong way and at the wrong time. He is too jumpy and too easily upset. His feelings are too easily hurt. His love and his hatred move along in jerky, leaping spasms. And he possesses little stability. He is too easily moved to anger and too easily moved to tears. And these perverted behaviorisms are not often met in any people that possess any knowledge of an ancient background. Short of a civilization, or a culture that affects him directly, the Kimite is destined, he is destined to continue as a subject not ready for the general application of culture and philosophy. Not a case for religion, nor a case for politics, nor a case for education in general, but he is destined to remain a case for the police. The prophet goes on to say that 
black people are not hard-headed creatures. We just have not been approached in the right way. Hence, our behavior is utterly disgusting to the rest of the world. So, they continue to make the mistake of trying to civilize black people with clubs instead of with the right kind of books. The culture introduced by the Fahami Prophet is designed to correct all of those aforementioned perverted behaviorisms and render us a culture people that are distinguished by our having become mild in manner and speech, helpless of others in distress, speakers of words of wisdom and understanding, and being full of goodness and mercy. We are told that at this point in our development, we would have to become the elect, in other words, the best he has to offer of God, the elect of God. It is at this point that the blockades at the entrance to the great universal library will be removed and all of the withheld universal knowledge will be open and flow out and down to us. The characteristics desired, desired and needed by the race are those developed faculties or abilities which guide, point out, inform, or direct the behavior of a person or race on the right course. Attainment of desired characteristics will elevate the behavior of the individual or people above the common, profane, lewd, trite, vulgar, vicious, and corrupt behaviors and attitudes we are witnessing in the people today. Our next lesson will include the science of Fahami, which is a continuation of this lesson. I'm not going to try to give you all of this in one day. I know that it's a lot to, to take in, especially if this is uh, your, your, your first time hearing something like this right here. And I'm sure that there is a, 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 lot that, a lot of questions that you may have. So we will continue this lesson next week. And we hope that you don't miss it. Salam. Peace. Giving is one of the pillars of our religions. We have a mission to fulfill. Our mission is to propagate the teachings of the Fahami Prophet Paul Nathaniel Johnson, the Fahami Rasul. We would do this by making available his teachings in the form of lectures and literature and other forms of media. We use funds to maintain our websites and reprint literature such as the Fahami Gospel, Change Gods, The God Ideal, and Enlightenment. In other words, we need funds to grow. Therefore, if you feel that the message of the Faham Rasul is worthy of distribution, then give and also tell your friends, especially family, about what we are teaching. This is our website at fahamigot.com, and the priest is also available to make presentations. I also would like to add that this is our inaugural uh, lecture on Facebook, so things will get more smooth as we move along and we would ask for any uh, positive feedback on ways that we can improve our broadcast. Thank you for having